Hey, hello all. This is uh, Shantanu and I'm very excited to share with you today my work on setting up a Spark cluster based on containers. That is, I'm going to run a uh, number of Spark containers on Kubernetes and I'm going to run my Kubernetes using Docker. So my Docker um, I'll, I'll have a set of Kubernetes nodes running using Docker on my virtual machines and then using the Kubernetes I'll bring up a cluster which will run Spark. So this entire work that I have done I have quickly um, summarized the main steps inside my blog and uh, I have followed the documentation available at kubernetes.io for creating the Kubernetes cluster itself. So my setup is basically a three node Kubernetes cluster. There are two kubelets, essentially the worker nodes for Kubernetes and there's one master node which works as a Kubernetes master as well as one more kubelet. Each of this, each of these uh, worker nodes run a docker to facilitate running containers inside those dockers. Now using these container resources, the docker containers, um, you know, then Kubernetes orchestrates the Spark cluster. So in order to start my Kubernetes cluster, I use some scripts. I have these scripts available in my blog. And using these scripts, once I bring up the master, then I can bring up the worker nodes one by one. All right. After the Kubernetes cluster is up, then I bring up the Spark cluster. Again, in case of the Spark cluster as well, I use a small script to run the Kubernetes kubectl, that is a kube control commands. All right. Okay. So now let me quickly go to my cluster. So here I have four um, command prompts open, out of which the three are pointing to my three nodes. So the first one, which is right now in focus, is the Kubernetes one node which is the master node so if I uh, if I try to run a command to kubectl get node so you can see there are three nodes out of which um, the first node is the kubernetes one node itself that is the local node I'm on then I have Kubernetes 2, which is showing as not ready. And then I have Kubernetes 3, which is showing as ready. The Kubernetes node 2 is not showing as ready because I have taken it down. I'll just start it off and show that you know, I have this um, scripts to bring them up. Start kubernetes.sh. And as soon as I start this script, um, it throws up some um, errors as well because uh, every time I start the scripts, it first tries to shut down any existing running Docker instance, which was uh, why the errors threw up because there was no Docker instance running. Anyway, once this uh, start script completes, then my Kubernetes node will show up as ready all the nodes in the cluster will show up as ready. So right now, as you can see, the Kubernetes 2 is also showing up as ready. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start the Spark cluster. So before I start the Spark cluster, let me show you my file structure. I think I have a bunch of uh, YML file here. These are the declarative statements that Kubernetes understand in terms of um, what does the cluster contain, what kind of services, what kind of pods, what kind of images it has to bring in. 
So uh, in my cluster, I'm going to have one Spark master node, two worker nodes, and one client node using a Zeppelin notebook. So um, let me quickly show the Spark, start spark.sh. Okay. Before that, let me first start the script while it's starting up. I can go inside and show you a little more. All these scripts, by the way, are available on the blog. So here I, I start up the start spark script, which internally invokes a number of Kubernetes commands to declaratively start off uh, the cluster. So here are the YML files, which has the information about what the cluster is defined to have. So let me first start with the um, maybe the master controller. So as you can see, it's a, a replication controller, which essentially is a declaration to tell Kubernetes that at any given point in time, so many of a particular container must be running. In this case, the replicas is equal to one. So there's only one master node is what I have instructed uh, Kubernetes to bring up and it is using the standard um, Google's uh, Spark version, right? So I think by this time, the Spark um, cluster should be up. So let me get a details. Uh, so again, kubectl get pods. So here I can see that the um, master and the worker nodes are up already in the running status. However, the con the Zeppelin client, which is the you know, uh, it basically provides a notebook to run any Spark jobs. That one is not up yet. It's still in the container creating mode. Maybe it's just downloading the image and so on. Any which way, um, let me quickly check the, um, you know, how this, uh, let me check how these containers are bound to the actual nodes, right? You remember I have three Kubernetes nodes. Um, hmm. So I'm going to expand the, um, pod descriptions here and I can see that, um, let me expand a bit more. Okay, I can see that um, my Spark master node is running from Kubernetes 2. My Spark controller node, uh, controller pod I must say, is first one, I have two pods. The first one is running from Kubernetes 2. The second one is running from the third Kubernetes node and uh, Zeppelin node is also running from a third Kubernetes node, right? So this being the situation, um, right? Let me show you that um, if the, um, if I can bring up the OABY for uh, the Kubernetes dashboard. So here is the dashboard for the Kubernetes system itself. So Kubernetes provides a nice dashboard to look at all the nodes and so on. So first one that we are seeing on screen is basically belongs to the Kubernetes system itself. So here for running the Kubernetes system using Docker, I'm running this many uh, nodes. There is a DNS, there is a uh, Kubernetes master and so on, as you can see. And there are two replication controllers, one for the dashboard, which is this application and one for the DNS. And let me now go to the Spark cluster namespace. You can see in the Spark cluster namespace, I have the uh, two worker pods and um, one master controller. If I click on them, I'll get into the details of this. Uh, so right now my master should be up. However, the web UI is still coming up. Some of the servers are, uh, you know, some of the services takes time to get started. Um, let me check if I can bring up the Spark um, WebUI. 
yep it's up so actually it's now showing that there are two worker nodes that are in alive state let me do something funny here so as you can see that there are two nodes are up uh, the worker nodes i'm going to kill one of them and see if uh, kubernetes can bring them up right so delete pod and the pod name and now it says the pod is deleted so as of now i have a pod that is in terminating state and then i have a new pod which is in running state okay so originally i did not have this p3zyk uh, spark worker pod right so this is automatically getting created so if i now go back to the um you know spark master ui i can see there are three nodes out of which one is dead already because i killed it and the other two are alive so it's, it's you know it's pretty powerful kubernetes is pretty powerful using the powerful features of docker it can almost instantly you know bring up clusters of spark or any other similar softwares right so this is the real power of uh, kubernetes and docker thank you for watching my video you can find the descriptions and the links below